Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, Josh Jacobs is back. And we're here to talk about it on this Saturday, August 26, 2023. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down. When he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And won. And welcome in, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available. Of course, as always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, many thanks to my man Ari. He does a great job each and every day making sure we're on YouTube. We're looking good. We're sounding good. We're doing what we're supposed to do. We definitely appreciate him. You can check him out on Twitter at Ari Produces. You can always hit me up on Twitter as well, at your boy Q254. And we got the Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line at 707-654-4693. Won't have any calls or text coming up in today's show matter of fact we won't have three segments we'll only have two segments it's a saturday show it's a special show and it's all because josh jacobs is signed sealed and delivered with the silver and black before we get into any of that though i do want to tell you about the title sponsor of the show which is underdog fantasy visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store sign up with promo code locked on to get your first deposit doubled up to $100. I'll tell you about more about them later on the show, but let's talk about the subject that is the subject, and it's the Saturday edition of the Lockdown Raiders podcast. I normally don't do these, right? And really, I think in the history of me doing the Lockdown Raiders podcast, which now I just celebrated my fifth year anniversary, which is pretty awesome. Can't believe that five years has gone by as fast as it, as it has. I thought back, and how many of these Saturday shows have I done? And I think it's only been two. I could be wrong, right? I mean, I could have missed a show or two that I don't remember about, but I honestly believe it's only been two and when it came to breaking news, and one, I remember like it was yesterday, <laughs> right? And that was the Khalil Mack news. I remember uh, coming in Friday night after a Friday night uh, high school day, a football football game that Friday night. I was covering Temple football, and I remember being on the sidelines of that, that Friday night and hearing rumblings about there could be something going on with Khalil Mack, and I was – just firmly in the category of there's no way it's going to happen, right? There's no chance that he's going to get traded. Go to sleep late Friday night, wake up super early Saturday morning to the news from Adam Schefter that Khalil Mack had been traded to the Bears. And I immediately got out of bed. For anyone who's been rocking with me for five years, you probably remember this, but for anyone who may be a nobody, uh, man, I immediately got out of bed when I saw that news. I don't even think I gave the wife a kiss that morning. You know, like a good morning, hey, good morning, how you doing, kiss? I didn't even think I did that because I was angry. Right. I was angry. I got out of bed, went and put on my clothes to, to go uh, mow the lawn. And I did that. I went, put my earbuds in, uh, put on a, a, some some 90s hip hop, late 90s, early 2000 and and let it go. M- make it do what it do. You know, when you're angry and you just go out, and you got to do something. That's how angry I was. I just had to do something. So I went out, mowed the lawn, edged it up, you know, and look, I did a good job. Let's not get it twisted. The, the lawn looked great, but. It was just, it was the, the, the energy that I had, the anger that I had. And I think, you know, when you see people walk and you could tell that they're walking angry, I think you could tell that I was mowing angry, <laughs> right? Just because of what happened. And so then after I did that, after I went back in the house, kind of calmed down and cleaned up a little bit, went to the radio station and knocked out an emergency podcast about Khalil Mack being traded and then went on to, to Baylor that day for a Baylor football game, had to cover him. And so by then I had got, you know, all the energy and everything out. So that was the one time that I did a Saturday podcast. And then I think the only other one was when Antonio Brown got released. And that was more of a whew, sigh of relief. Like, I think the Raiders dodged a bullet on that one. Even though the intention was great to get a big-time wide receiver, fantastic player, but we all know that he had some real deal issues that weren't going weren't gonna to cut it with the silver and black. And so that was another one. I think this is the only one that's really been a Saturday broadcast that's been a positive, <laughs> right? But finding out that Josh Jacobs, uh, you know, seeing it official on Saturday morning, I was actually at the barbershop. I go to the barbershop every single Saturday morning to get the haircut. I'm getting ready. You know, I'm excited because I know that the pregame and postgame show I'll be doing later on this afternoon for the Raiders, uh, you know, final preseason game of the year. I've been having a lot of fun doing that. So I'm already in my mind. I'm already Raiders, Raiders, Raiders. Then all of a sudden to see the tweet from Ian Rappaport that uh, he's back. The Raiders and star running back Josh Jacobs have agreed to terms on a new one-year contract that could be worth up to $12 million, uh, taking the place of the franchise tag. The NFL rushing leader returns on a deal that includes a signing bonus. So uh, it's not what he wanted when it comes to the multi-year deal, but he gets something. 
right? Uh, up to $12 million on one year. And then, of course, the Raiders and him could get into ne- negotiations after the season and they could work out whatever they got to work out, uh, regardless if they hit him with the franchise tag, which they still have the ability to hit him with the franchise tag following the year again if they want to. But that's not even a worry right now, right? Because the biggest thing is that Josh Jacobs and the Raiders came to agrees, agreements on a deal, and now he's going to be returning. The Raiders are in Dallas right now to play their final preseason game. Obviously, he's not going to be there, but he's back in time for camp, and we'll talk about it. But before we talk about, you know, what this could mean for the beginning of the season in that first game against the Denver Broncos on the road, uh, it's funny, you know, on Friday, uh, I was preparing for my radio show, Unnecessary Roughness on Radio Radio 920, and sometimes you have guests on that can't come on at the certain time that you want them to come on, so they'll say, hey, man, I can't do that. I got something planned, but, you know, if you want to record something ahead of time before the show, and then you can run it whenever you want to. So I'm always willing to do that, and I do that quite a bit. You know, because sometimes the times just don't don't match up, especially if you're talking to someone that's on the East Coast and I'm on the West Coast. So if I say, hey, uh, you know, I, I need you at four o'clock on Friday and they say, oh, that's seven o'clock my time on a Friday night. Well, you know, sometimes that, that just doesn't work. So it's funny on Friday. I did this interview with the guy from NFL.com. Right. I was super excited about talking to him. He's, he's really good. And obviously he's really uh, sharp when it comes to all things NFL. So I have him on my radio show quite a bit. So. I recorded with him at noon Pacific time. My show starts at two, but I was going to run the interview at four o'clock on Friday. Like I was excited to, to uh, do the interview at four. Matter of fact, I'll tell you, because if you look at Twitter, you'll see who it was. It was Nick Shook from NFL.com. He was, he was, uh, you know, the guy that I was interviewing and uh, he's a guy that I actually met last year when the Raiders played in the hall of fame game against the Jaguars. And that was the day that Josh Jacobs played in the hall of fame game. We sat right next to each other in the press box and you know, we, we talked about him being out there and how crazy that was. Anyway, we've developed a really good relationship ever since then. So he's a, he's a guest on my show quite a bit. So anyway, so long story short, I interview him. We have like a 18 to 20 minute interview, really good stuff. Right. And I asked him in the interview, at what point do you think Josh Jacobs needs to return so he could be available for, you know, for the Raiders and for uh, the regular season for, for week one. And so he had given, I, I don't know what day it was. doesn't really matter. Conversation was really good. I was planning on playing it at 4 o'clock on, uh, on, on Friday, 4 o'clock Pacific time. Well, about 15 minutes after I was done recording, he sends me a text and says, oh, I think uh, Josh Jacobs is about to sign. And I said, wait, what? And he said, I'm hearing rumblings that the Jacobs deal is almost done. So all of a sudden, I was like, well, dang, it's 12 now or 12.15, whatever the case may be. I'm not going to play this interview till 4.00. I don't want it to go on the air and sound like it's old. Like, hey, when do you think Josh is going to, you know, sign? And he's already signed. So I scrambled real quick. Matter of fact, Ari, me and my, my guy Ari, we scrambled to get all the Josh Jacobs conversation out. So it was about three or four minutes worth of the interview. We just just erased because we didn't want it to have anything to do with Josh Jacobs just in case the news broke while we were on the air, right? And I was just like, well, I'll just play it off. No big deal. So then what's even crazier is when 4 o'clock came, the radio station, like, got off just – I don't know. Somehow we were off the air, right? Something happened, power outage or something, and we were off the air. So we were off for about 15 minutes. Well, in that same interview, we were talking about Trey Lance, and I was asking him if he thought Trey Lance was going to get traded. In the time that we were off air, the Trey Lance information comes down that he's traded to the Dallas Cowboys. So then I was like, I can't even play the interview at all. So I never ended up playing the interview, which is funny. And then we never, you know, the show ends up, we wrap up the show at 5 o'clock Pacific time, and the Josh Jacobs news never comes down. So then all of a sudden it comes down on Saturday when I'm in the barbershop and uh, preparing, obviously, later on this afternoon for the pre- and the post-game show. But I say all that to tell you, good news, the fact that Josh Jacobs is back. So is he in back? Is he back in time for week one versus Denver Broncos? We'll talk about it coming up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. We'll do it after I tell you about the title sponsor, which is Underdog Fantasy. August is here. It's almost September, but you know what that means. The official start of Fantasy Football Drafting Month. Get championship ready for your home league by trying out best ball and Underdog Fantasy. All you do, one live snake draft. No waivers, no trades. Underdog set your best lineup every single week. Try it out with Underdog's Best Ball Mania Tournament. The largest fantasy football contest of all time is back and even bigger. $15 million of total prizes is up for grabs, including a crazy $3 million going to the winner. And last year, the winner drafted their team in July. So you don't have to wait around. You could do it right now. Visit underdogfantasy.com, find them in the App Store, sign up with promo code Locked On to get your first deposit doubled up to $100. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code Locked On. 
All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast, little Saturday edition of the podcast, little emergency podcast, I guess we're calling it, with the news of Josh Jacobs agreeing to a deal, a one-year deal worth up to $12 million. And I don't know if you remember, Raider Nation, uh, some of you that have been rocking with me each and every day, you probably do remember. I had Josina Anderson on my radio show probably, I don't know, uh, within the last month, right? I, I don't know exactly what date it was. I can go back in the podcast and look, but just for the sake of this conversation, I don't know when it was. It was sometime, I think, in the month of August. Uh, the shows start to stack up after a while. But uh, she was talking about the Josh Jacobs situation, and I asked her, you know, I really asked her in a roundabout way what went wrong in their negotiations as they were trying to get to a multi-year deal. And she wouldn't give me the information on that, even though she knows it. She wouldn't give me the information on that just because she can't. But she did allude to what she thought would be a good deal for Josh Jacobs, which she thought would get the deal done. So it's just pretty interesting because I remember bringing it to the podcast and saying, listen to what she said. That's around the ballpark of what it's going to be. And it was really just about spot on. I think she says $12.9 million, and the Raiders get around $12 million for Josh Jacobs. But here's the question that I asked Josina Anderson and her response, her pretty lengthy response, when it comes with it, to what it will take to get Josh Jacobs uh, you know, taken care of. Uh, there's been reports, and I don't know what's true and what's not, about you know what was offered, what wasn't offered. From your understanding, was the big hang-up more the, the guaranteed money or, or like the, the success in of years? Um, I can't um, go into those details. I do know the answer to that, but okay. I can't go into detail with that. But what I what I can say is what my opinion as to um, what I think might be a good idea to resolve the situation. And I did, um, you know, kind of a similar thing when the Ravens were going through this with Lamar. And I came on Twitter and I, you know, put the idea of, you know, an amplified one-year deal that, um, you know, would have him paid over Kyler Murray, but obviously less than um, than Aaron Rodgers. And, and, you know, maybe that would be something that could get it done or at least just kind of take the air out the balloon and, and de- defrost everything after Lamar had went to Arizona – or, excuse me, after – the Ravens were in Arizona at the owners' meetings, and he surprised John Harbaugh with that announcement of a trade demand. And so I was trying to, you know, kind of think of, okay, what could work? So in my opinion, it, it is, um, uh, you know, the idea of an amplified one-year deal. Obviously, you can't do more than one. Right. And because uh, Derrick Henry made uh, $25.5 million, um, guaranteed in the two years, um, in the first two years of his deal, when the Titans gave Derrick Henry his deal uh, three years ago, and we can have that debate, you and I, if you want to, as far as you know why that was deserving him having the Russian title and two plus seasons of or two seasons rather coming into that deal of a thousand yards or more. So we can we can talk about how apples to apples and not this is with Josh Jacob, right? Um, but I do feel like given that that deal and he got that guaranteed over the first two years um, and averaging out at 12.75. Um, and that was three years ago. And we all know for your people that are listening that the cap goes up an average of about seven to 8% a year. I do think that Josh has an argument to at least have a deal that allows him at least to make up to 12.9, if not 13 million. Based on the fact, also, you're looking at what just happened with Saquon's, you know, situation, basically getting the tag a value of 10.091 and then an opportunity to make another 909000 in incentives to bring him to $11 million. So if I'm going to Josh, you know, and I'm saying, okay, look, I recognize that you were the rushing leader. I recognize, you know, what percentage of our offense you were and – you know, I'm trying to make good. Now, based on where the market is going, I don't even have to do none of this. Matter right. of fact, I can also rescind this. I don't even have to do none of this. But because I recognize that that is, you know, what it is. And on top of that, I'm going to add a little bit of whipped cream on top of that as far as allowing you to make more than Derek. Not because I have to. Not because the market is currently dictating that. But because in my mind, and this is my opinion, nothing nobody said but it's my opinion. I do agree that you have to pay a little bit of a tax for mul- for multiple reasons when you're doing a contract. Sometimes it's because the guy is the absolute franchise face, like I believe Saquon is for the Giants when it comes to the you know comparison to everybody else, like and Daniel Jones. When Monday Night Football comes in town, they they market in Saquon. You got to pay for that. 
you got to pay some t- sometimes in a contract negotiate you got to pay for the good guy tax right. you know, he's a great representative of your corporation in Josh Josh's case and in and, and some of these other running backs case I also agree that you want to you want to pay a little bit of a tax because you want the guy to come up full mind body and soul in addition to getting his money that he didn't really get because it's not a multi-year deal. You understand what I'm saying? So this is what, for me, takes it to why I would at least allow him to, in my opinion, at the very least, and I'm not saying this is what he is, not work Christian and all this other stuff. I'm just saying given what I'm hearing, you know, what I, and the market is, this is to me what I would do to kind of try to bring it in the middle. So there you go. See, she was pretty much spot on. She talks to these players. She talks to the agents. She's a really good insider, been around the NFL for a very long time. She's with CBS Sports right now. And so uh, I remember bringing that part of the, the conversation, matter of fact, the whole conversation that we did when it came to Josh Jacobs to the podcast and said, just look around about that $12 million. So the franchise tag was $10 million. I figured that it would take that and a little sugar on top is what I kept calling it to get the deal done, and eventually it does. But the, the, the best thing about the whole situation is that Today is the third day, the third and final preseason game for the Raiders. They're taking on the Cowboys. They've got to get the roster trimmed down to 53 men by Tuesday. But with Josh Jacobs reporting and agreeing to a deal on Saturday, that gives them really a couple weeks to get him acclimated. And that was the most concerning thing is how long was he going to wait? Was he going to sit out long enough to the point where when he does get back, he won't be available for week one? And the reason I, I really wanted him to be available for week one is because he's always having big games against the Denver Broncos. Like, there's there's something about playing the Broncos where he just goes off. And I, I remember asking him in the locker room, he said, man, it's something about that rivalry. Something about that rivalry gets me a little bit more fired up, and I go. And, and he does, and he has big days against the Denver Broncos. So I'm excited now that Josh is back in the mix. Even though there's no preseason games to, to get a, you know, a little bit of a hit a couple times, I mean, he'll still have time in practice to at least you know start to get his legs under him, get acclimated, get back in football shape. I know he's in in good shape. I know that Josh Jacobs is always going to take care of himself, but to get himself in football shape and get ready for the upcoming season, that is a win for the silver and black. Not only that, uh, the way that they went about doing it, I mentioned it on a show later or earlier last week, the fact that, you know, this was completely opposite of the Indianapolis situation where everything was out in the public. There's like a line drawn in the sand, obviously feelings are hurt. And I know that this whole situation didn't go smooth with Josh Jacobs and, and his agents and the Raiders. And I, I know that there's not, you know, there's, there's there's a level of understanding that still needs to be worked out between the two. Like, I know it's not all rainbows and puppy dogs, but the fact that it wasn't in, in public's view, it wasn't talked about in the public, it wasn't talked about in the media, is why I gave Dave Ziegler and company so much credit. They just said, hey, we respect JJ, we're going to take care of the situation, uh, you know, and, and we don't have any further information on it, and we're just going to keep moving forward. Like, they were very, you know, ho-hum about it, and that's what I could appreciate because at least it wasn't, something that was like embarrassing towards Josh Jacobs in, in the public or, or whatever the case may be. I think that they went about doing it the right way. But now you add Josh Jacobs to the mix, right? You got Jimmy G, you got Devontae Adams. Obviously, you got Jacoby Myers, Hunter Renfro. Now you have Josh Jacobs. And I do believe that him and Zamir White will be a nice little one-two punch. Now there's no, you know, Zamir White doesn't have to be the guy because you know that the guy is back. Josh Jacobs is going to be there. He's going to be, you know, a major part of the Raiders offense moving forward. And, you know, with him coming in, you know, a couple of weeks before the regular season gets started. I mean, look, their first game is what, September 10th? I think it's the September 10th. I think that's the, the official date or whenever. It's, it's right around that date. I mean, you look at the calendar, it's not even September yet. So it gives them time to ramp up. That's the biggest point. It gives them time to ramp up before they head to Denver. Uh, obviously, the first two games of the season are going to be tough. You got Denver, then you've got, uh, then you got Buffalo. They're both on the road before you return home to Allegiant Stadium and host the Pittsburgh uh, Steelers, which that's going to be a tough one, too. Right, I think that they're going to be a lot better than they were last year. I think Kenny Pickett's going to be uh, a lot better than he was last year. So, I mean, the Raiders have a tough schedule, but knowing that you have not 28, but number eight in the mix, back in the mix, is a great thing. One year, $12 million, fine. So be it. It's all good. And then, again, at the end of the season, the Raiders, the front office, and Josh Jacobs can either you know decide to go separate ways. They could decide to franchise him again. They could work out the long-term deal that they were working on that just didn't get done by that, that, that date that they were supposed to have. What was it? Uh, July 17th, I believe. So, yeah, it was, it was uh, you know, it, it's a good day to have a good day, right, as I said. And I know that this will be a conversation that we have quite a bit on the pregame show today. And, again, that, that kicks off at 3 o'clock. So, depending on what time you're listening to it, uh, to listening to this, the pregame show may already be going on. It might be over. Uh, who knows? The game might be on right now, depending on 
uh, what time you're listening to us. But I uh, thought I would do knock out a little Saturday morning uh, emergency, uh, you know, a little emergency podcast. And I guess emergency sounds like it's a bad thing. Uh, it's not. It's a good thing. It's a positive thing when it comes to Josh Jacobs and the Raiders agreeing to a deal. So that's really all I got for you. Uh, it's a good day to have a good day. Enjoy the game. Uh, whatever time you, you watch it, check it out, or whatever time you listen to this, hopefully enjoy the preseason game. Uh, I already talked about the guys that I'll be focused in on and, uh, you know, who could potentially maybe earn that spot, earn, earn that final little roster spot. Of course, the cutdowns happen by, uh, on Tuesday by 1 p.m. Pacific time. They've got to have the, the roster trimmed down to 53 men. They've got to have the practice squad set. And, you know, on top of that, other guys, other teams around the league are going to be doing the same thing. So there could be some guys that the Raiders pick up on the waiver wire. There could be some guys that they release that are going to get picked up on the waiver wire. They're going to release some talent this year that's going to get picked up by other teams and i think it's going to happen pretty quickly but that's the conversation for another day raider nation again hopefully you enjoy the the game enjoy the rest of your weekend hopefully everyone stays safe in this game and definitely uh, if you're out and about in those streets man definitely be careful because there's a lot of crazy things happening so you want to make sure that you make it home to your loved ones so uh we'll talk again on monday raider nation again enjoy the rest of the weekend uh you know take care of yourself take care of your family love on your family as always just win baby